Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Welcome back to another episode of the History AI Podcast, where we dive deep into the stories of the past, bringing you tales of valiant heroes, cunning villains, and events that shaped our world. I'm Chuck. And I'm Marco. Chuck, today we're diving deep into the story of Lewis Millet, an American soldier with quite the riveting tale. Ah, Lewis Millet. A name that not everyone might recognize immediately, but by the end of this episode, trust me, you'll never forget. Before we dive in, if you love our podcast, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give us a rating and share with your friends. Alright, now, let's start with a bit about his early life. Lewis Millet was born on December 15th. 1920, in Mechanic Falls, Maine. Mechanic Falls sounds like a place where robots go on vacation. Nice one. Millet grew up during the Great Depression, and his family history was steeped in military service, tracing back to the American Revolutionary War. Now that's a lineage. As for talents, while we mostly know Millet for his military prowess, he was also an avid painter. Just goes to show that warriors can be artists too. It's said that Millet was a true patriot. Before the U.S. even entered World War II, and frustrated by the delay, he deserted the U.S. Army to join the Canadian Army to fight against the Nazis. Talk about commitment. Sorry U.S. Army, you're just not war-ready fast enough for me. Lewis had a deep-rooted sense of duty. It wasn't just about adventure or rebellion. He genuinely believed in fighting for what's right. The tyrannical forces of World War II provoked many to action, and Millet was no exception. As we mentioned, Millet initially joined the Canadian Army because he couldn't wait for the U.S. to get involved. Once the U.S. did enter the war, he quickly transferred back and saw action in several theaters. That's right. Millet served in North Africa, Sicily, and Italy. He was no stranger to combat by the time Korea came around. In fact, during World War II, he earned the Silver Star for bravery in combat, setting the stage for the leader he'd become. And when we think of Lewis Millet's combat experiences, one particularly intense battle stands out. Marco, set the scene for us. All right. It's 1951, during the height of the Korean War. We find ourselves on Hill 180 near Somni, a pivotal location for both American and communist forces. And this isn't just any hill. It's about to earn a new name, Bayonet Hill. So, Lewis Millet, then a captain, is in charge of Easy Company. They're facing machine gun fire, and instead of taking cover or retreating, Millet has a different idea. Oh, absolutely. He realizes that waiting or pulling back might mean even more casualties. So, he orders and personally leads a bayonet charge. A bayonet charge? That's close combat at its most intense, and it's incredibly rare in modern warfare, especially against machine gun positions. The very idea might sound suicidal to some but Millet's decision was a blend of tactical noose and sheer audacity. Under his leadership, Easy Company charged up that hill, bayonets fixed, engaging the enemy in hand-to-hand combat. It was brutal and intense, but in the end, Millet and his men took the hill, hence the name Bayonet Hill. For his fearless leadership and unwavering commitment to his men and mission, Millet was awarded the Medal of Honor. And let's not forget, this is just one medal among many. Throughout his military career, Millet was recognized with a slew of honors, from the Silver Star to the Legion of Merit. His bravery in battle was matched by his commitment to his comrades and country. That's right Chuck. His story from Bennett Hill is a testament to how, sometimes, unconventional decisions driven by courage can shape the outcome of a battle. And that legacy continues to inspire soldiers today. Vietnam was a different beast altogether. But Millet, ever the leader, served in various capacities, bringing with him the wealth of experience from his previous battles. It wasn't just about combat for him, it was about leadership, mentorship, and guiding the next generation of soldiers. From the deserts of North Africa in World War II to the hilltops of Korea and the jungles of Vietnam, Millet's story is a testament to a life dedicated to service, courage, and leadership. Hold that thought Marco. Before we discuss his post-war life, a word from our sponsor. From the mind behind the History AI podcast comes an electrifying journey into the past. A ripple through time, Franklin's folly. Dive into a tale where Benjamin Franklin, America's beloved inventor, takes an unexpected journey through time. 
but with his leap, he unleashes a powerful ripple. Now, with dark forces lurking in the shadows, harnessing this energy to shatter and enslave the world, it's a race against time. Will Franklin fix the future? Or will history rewrite itself? Uncover the secrets. A ripple through time, Franklin's folly. Time has never been more fragile. On Amazon presale now, Lewis Millet's military journey is undeniably inspiring, but what's equally intriguing is his life post-retirement. While many would think of retirement as a period of rest, for Millet, it was a new chapter of continued service. Absolutely Chuck. After hanging up his military boots, Millet settled in California. But he wasn't one to just enjoy the sunshine and palm trees. He took to advocacy, particularly for veterans. He deeply understood the challenges faced by soldiers transitioning to civilian life and made it his mission to help. Not only that, but he also became an educator of sorts. He was frequently invited to military academies and institutions to share his experiences. Imagine learning about leadership from someone who led a bayonet charge against machine gun positions. Talk about a first-hand account. And beyond institutions, Millet was also involved in community outreach, engaging with youth and ensuring the stories, sacrifices, and lessons of wars weren't forgotten by the newer generations. His artwork also began to take center stage. Remember how we mentioned he was an avid painter? Well, post-retirement, he dedicated more time to this passion, often using it as a medium to express his experiences and emotions from his time in service. It's a testament to the multifaceted nature of Millet. Soldier, leader, advocate, educator, an artist. His post-military life was as rich and varied as his time in uniform. And all throughout, he remained dedicated to the principles he fought for, liberty, justice, and the well-being of his fellow soldiers. Millet's story isn't just about bravery in battle. It's a testament to commitment, dedication, and believing in a cause. His legacy, especially his bayonet charge, is taught in military academies, showcasing how sheer determination can overcome seemingly insurmountable odds. Absolutely. And beyond the textbooks and accolades, Millet's story is a reminder that history isn't just about events, but about individuals who dared to make a difference. Lewis Millet passed away in 2009, leaving behind a legacy that extended far beyond the battlefield. A true testament to a life lived fully, with purpose and passion. And while we've given a brief overview, there's so much more to explore about this hero. As always, we encourage our listeners to dive deeper, ask questions, and seek out more about the incredible stories from history. And if you've enjoyed this episode, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button, give us a rating, and share with your fellow history buffs. Thanks for tuning into the History AI Podcast. I'm Marco. And I'm Chuck. Until next time, keep exploring the past.